let's talk about the economics of cloud. How much does it cost to be on cloud? What happens if I move some of my resources from my data center to cloud? How long is it going to take? And if I have to pay monthly, what will my monthly bill be? How do I know that? AWS gives you a lot of tools to manage your cost before you hop onto AWS Cloud or after you have made the move to Cloud. Then, once you have been on Cloud for a while, and we'll take a look at all of these things, so at the very beginning, at a very basic level, it is the pay-as-you-go model. It is not a CAPEX model. That is capital expenditure model. It is an OPEX model. So you pay only for what you use. You do not have to pay a fee or anything, and you can get a volume discount as well. So if you are a large organization and you have multiple teams and multiple accounts for AWS, you can have a billing option where you will have one person, one account that is going to pay the bill for all of the accounts in the organization. And the benefit you get from doing this is a volume discount. There are three tools that we are going to look at now. One is known as the AWS Cost Calculator. And what the AWS Cost Calculator does for you is it tells you how much you'll be charged for each service for all the resources that you are going to use. It will calculate and tell you your monthly bill. So, in this scenario, we are looking at a very simple implementation where we have a dev environment, a QA environment, and a broad environment. In dev and QA, we have one server each that we are choosing as g2.medium. And in broad, we have two servers. We know that broad is going to run for a very long time, so we are using the billing option of a one-year partial payment, and then we get a lot of discounts. If we know that this workload is going to be required for up to three years, then we can select this option, and we'll get up to a 75% discount now. This is only for servers. Down below, we have used EBS volumes, which are just hard drives. And then I also selected three volumes, one each for dev, QA, and production. And then I also added how much snapshot data I'm going to have every month. If you see on the top of here that I get the monthly bill now, this is something only for EC2. I could use the same thing for my database as well. So I will have some databases as well, and I can add all the databases I need. Apart from this, if I scroll down here, there are so many services on your left that you can see that if you want to use all these services, and it will just let me know what the monthly charge is for all of these things. So this is something you can do before you hop on to AWS. There are servers I have at my disposal in my data center, and then I'm going to transfer my workload, my application, all my data to the cloud, how much am I going to pay, and this is a tool that is used day in and day out by pre-salespersons, by solutions architects, by executives who want to know beforehand how much they're going to pay. On the same line, we have something called TCO Calculator. That is the Total Cost of Ownership Calculator. Now here, we can also add the manual labor that we have, the personnel that we have, the power that we have, and it goes into more granular details of the resources that we have. It just gives you a total cost of ownership, and this is why these two things are very, very beautiful things. If you want to know beforehand what will happen if you move some of your workload to cloud, and you get a very, very, very good idea of the cost that you are going to spend in cloud on a monthly basis. Coming back to AWS Console. Within the console, there's a tool called AWS Trusted Advisor that essentially checks your implementations. So once you are on the cloud, once you have added all the sources on the cloud from your databases, your servers, your storage, your cache, everything, then the AWS Trusted Advisor checks all that you have done and then it gives you recommendations on four different things. Among those four things are the cost optimization, which will tell you that if you are using these workloads for production, you might want to convert them into a reserve pricing option. So there are on-demand pricing options, there is a reserve pricing option, and then there's a spot pricing option. Reserve is the one that you use if you know you are going to run this workload for a period of one year, two years, or three years. Then you can buy that capacity in advance from AWS. 
And you don't have to necessarily pay all the money up front. You can do a partial payment for one year, and you still get up to 40% of the discount, which is really beautiful. Apart from your cost, AWS Trusted Advisor also gives you recommendation on performance, on security, and fault tolerance. So if you know some of your firewall routes are not as stringent as they should be, it is going to scream at you, please don't do this. If you can see here, I have some of my security groups that have instance level firewalls, or they have unrestricted access. So I have kept it open for the entire world, and I really shouldn't be doing that. So these are the things that AWS provides for cost optimization and for cost management in cloud. So even before you are into the cloud or when you have been in the cloud for a while, you can use these tools to optimize your costs on a regular basis. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.